Okay, I'm back with a vengeance. What I'm going to do today, I'm going to show you how to make uh, somewhat of a hybrid of some traditional Korean cooking. Now, Korean cooking, again, and I'll say this probably with everything that I do, is one of my favorite foods. Why? Because it is in your face, spicy and uh, raw, you know, and that's the difference between Chinese cuisine, which is more refined, and Korean cooking. I tend to equate Korean cooking with maybe southern cooking, uh, you know, western, U.S. southern. Uh, it is not so refined. Contemporary uh, techniques and styles have changed, but in general, uh, you know, Korean cooking is very, very chili laden, garlic laden. And when I say laden, I mean if you get something with chili on it, it's going to be crusted with chilies. Kimchi, pickles, cabbages, things that are really sharp and in your face. So how do we do this bullshit that I'm talking about? Well, I'll show you. Uh, we're going to do a Korean style short ribs with a kimchi fried rice. Now some of these things uh, vary from what I said. If it was shit, I can get down at the giant. But you know what? I said the hell with it. What I said yesterday is inoperative. I found some kimchi in my refrigerator and I had some old rice in my refrigerator. Let's get on with it for our marinade for our uh, short ribs. Now these are beef short ribs. These are called a flank and cut. And what a flank and cut is, it's just a cross section or a cross cut of the uh, beef short rib. And I'll show you what it kind of looks like. And you can take these little things and you cut them between the bones. And if you stack them up like that, you'll see the, uh, you'll see the shape of the short rib as it was, which doesn't lend itself particularly well to grilling unless you like to uh, chew on things like a dog. There's certain things that I like to chew on like dog, but beef isn't one of them. Anyway, we're going to cut these into about three or four inch lengths, give or take. Some ribs are shorter than the other. And this is a variation on a dish called a galbi, which is a uh, kind of a grilled Korean short rib. In this case, we're going to do it in a pan because I'm not wealthy enough to have a grill. Nor do I have the motivation to buy one and set one up outside and lug the camera out. Whatever. Let's get on with the marinade for this. Fast. Okay? Garlic. I've already peeled. We're going to reserve one clove for our kimchi fried rice. And these pans are getting hot already because I'm trying. This might be a lengthy uh, process. So, what are we going to do? Rough chop. And I'll show you what I mean by how intensely flavored Korean food is, man. I love it. That shit is good. Spicy octopus. I'm telling you. Uh, it makes great first date food because if you go for Korean and the girl that you're seeing, if she's totally into it and doesn't get it, go, oh, I don't like to eat garlic on a first date. You're in for something good, at least in the short term. Anyway, into our bowl goes the garlic. Some green onion. The green part of the green onion. Not too much. You don't need much. Some of it's going to go into our fried rice, into our bowl. Soy sauce. Okay. Now, sugar. Now the key for making a marinade like this, and this is a variation on marinade that they might use for a dish called a bulgogi, is try to achieve an, a, bal a balance between the soy and the sugar. And when you do, put more sugar in it. You know, Korean food, it's like that. And that's pretty much it. And you might find a lot of variations on this. Some contain like a, like a pureed Asian pear, some rice vinegar, stuff like that. Now these aren't going to be able to marinate as long as they should which should uh, really be overnight. And we're going to put it on a bowl, and we're going to stick our monkey hands in it and kind of work it all in there, okay? And just get them all coated, and we're just going to let this sit. Like I said, it should go for at least a couple hours, but I'm just cooking for myself, and uh, I'm not impressed with myself, so I'm not trying to. We're just let that sit for a minute. Next, we're going to go ahead and backtrack and do our kimchi fried rice. Very simple. Kimchi, fermented cabbage. Uh, but 
it is a very traditional Korean accompaniment. But you have to think of it as kimchi, as you might say the word pickle, because it's not just cabbage. It can be anything from fish to turnips to carrots to any kind of vegetable. Anyway, we're going to take our uh, green onion. Fucking egg. And uh, we're just going to cut, you know, whatever that is. Some. I'm going to teach you how to cook. I'm not teaching you how to uh, put together a particle accelerator. Cooking is feel. Cooking is what tastes good and how to develop it. Our kimchi. We'll just pull some out of here. And what they do is they take the uh, <clears throat> bok choy or the cabbage, or whatever they're uh, using, and they salt it, pull the excess moisture out of it, rinse it off, and then they put a mixture of chilies and garlic and sometimes fish sauce and ginger and different seasonings and spices in it. Push it all down real good between the leaves. Pack it in a uh, generally an earthenware crock and then just let it sit and it starts to ferment. It sounds gross, doesn't it? Well, that's why it's good. And we're just going to chop that up. Our garlic clove. Again, just chop it up. And this is what I mean about Korean food. When you get something that has garlic in it, you're going to find pieces of garlic in it. They don't play around, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And then that goes into our pan. And we're just going to kind of move it around a little bit. Look, fancy chef technique. It's called sauteing. Make sure our heat remains fairly high because you want the rice to get uh, you want the vegetables to cook fast. You're trying to emulate what you would be doing with a wok, which I also don't have. I'm going to put a little bit more oil in there. And this is just a neutral oil. You can use peanut oil, canola oil, uh, whatnot. Give it one more push around, and then we'll push it off to the side. Same technique that you would do in a wok, where you push it up against the side. we we'll take our rice into the pan kind of flatten it out a little, creates more surface area, and then it tends to get crispier a little bit faster. Now, we're going to put that on the back burner for now, okay? Again, a pan, hot, or theoretically overnight marinated ribs into the pan. It's going to create some oil, but we're not going to worry about that. Because as we all know, oil is good for you. My God, what do you want to live forever? How much money do you possibly have? And we're going to go against the common chef uh, axiom of not crowding the pan. I want to show you the techniques like this. And a lot of things, well, you actually can go against. You can break what's generally called rules of cooking. I break them all the time. We toss our kimchi fried rice around into that. We're going to put just a touch of soy, not too much. And this, by the way, is a thick soy, which means it just has more, a little bit more starch in it, and it's a little bit uh, more viscous. I'm going to find some toms. Let's meet back here for some uh, kimchi fried rice, shall we? We're going to take our short ribs, and you can see the sugar is starting to caramelize on them. And these bad boys look good. The other thing I like about Korean food, it's not a particularly fussy cuisine, it's a functional cuisine. Whereas Chinese food is uh, generally divided into north and south, but each one of those regions can be broken down into multiple provinces. Um, Korean food isn't like that. You know, it's generally defined by its time periods. It's just, 
country's development as opposed to its provincial culinary differences. And then we're going to take what's left of some of our liquid or our marinade. We're going to put that right in the pan with the ribs. Okay? You with me? No? Well, I don't know what to tell you. And then we're going to take a little bit of water and put it in there with our ribs. Make a little bit of sauce. You know, we're going to get it all juicy. Our fried rice. It's for all intents and purposes done. We have another small pan on the front. Okay? You may have noticed that. Unless the camera's not focused. But I'm going to keep rolling anyway. Finish our fried rice. We're going to put some fresh green onion in there. Just like that. I mean, you don't have to do it just like that. You can throw it across the room for all I care. And if you notice, no egg in here. Fried rice generally has a lot of egg, scrambled egg in it. And most variations do, but in this case, I'll show you something that I really like to do. Besides worry. And I love eggs, especially now that there's a big salmonella scare. You'll be fine. You want to stay healthy? Just don't watch the news. Now, a garnish. We'll take some more of our green onion, okay? We're going to mince it up a little and put it like that. Get another bowl. I'm going to start using paper plates. We're going to put it into our bowl. And on that, we are going to sprinkle some ground red chili, okay, and quite a bit. See that? And we're just going to toss it around. We're ready to plate. See how long that took? No time at all. Before you know it, you'll be on the couch. You'll be good. We're going to take our bowl. I happen to have this Chinese plate here, which is one of the things left over from my restaurant. And uh, that's about it and a lifetime of torturous memories. What we're going to do, we're going to take our fried rice and we're going to put it right in the bowl. Just like that. <clears throat> or pretty close to just like that. Then, we're going to take some of our short ribs and we're going to put that right kind of down the side a little. And we'll take some of our sauce, and pour it over. We will take our softly fried egg and put it right on there. Make sure everything's off because it's not my house. I don't really want it to burn down much. Then we'll take our scallions and our crushed ground chili and we'll sprinkle it over. And that is my idea of great food. You know, it's not fussy, and uh, it's just, it's just, it'll blow your mind how good it is. Korean food, go check it out later.